These days, more than ever, we're all struggling for meaning, searching for meaning and higher purpose and higher principles in our life. There's day-to-day -day struggles. We're worried about the future. We're wondering who we really are, why we're really here. And we have the time on our hands now to actually explore that. Whether we ask for this time or not, we have it. And those like myself who have been studying and practicing the Indian Vedic um, you know, teachings um, are feeling very inspired and hopeful, at least most of them that I know, because they've been prepared for life and the transformations in life um, for a long time. And we have been transitioning um, in our mind and consciousness many times we have shifted, not just people that have studied Indian sciences, but all spiritual people. And this takes me to why Vedic astrology is such a great thing to study and to understand. Because you see, it's not really just about reading charts. Reading charts accurately and correctly is a symptom of understanding the principles. And these are the principles of life. You know, a good astrologer is not just someone who is a good technician, like someone who can do math well. You can do math well, but not have any context or not understand why you would be doing math in the first place. You can do math so that you can, you know, calculate, you know, the best formula to rip everybody off and kill everybody. Or you can learn math and learn the great formulas and great systems so that you can create heaven on earth. You can use the tools and the techniques of astrology for any purpose. But the real benefit, the real purpose of Vedic astrology, and this isn't just my opinion, but this is in the Vedic um, you know, culture and context itself, was for us to understand who we are, to understand how spirit takes form from your unembodied state, to your embodied state where every moment of your life and every action that you've taken, that you will take, refer to a larger karmic cycle, which is your true nature learning to discover itself. And when I unfold the Vedic Astrology from A to Z course, um, the first thing that I talk about are these larger Vedic concepts, these things from the culture itself, where I start, where I'll show you these larger structures that don't even really have to do with astrology per se, they have to do with cosmology. And it's not just spiritual preaching, it's not just, you know, God is this. No, it's literally showing how the sky, how the cosmos itself is the matrix through which our karma unfolds, through which we are learning to know ourself. So again, the universe itself is the divine being learning to know itself through you, as you, and you are in fact an extension of that evolutionary imperative. And so the first part of the A to Z format is actually this unfolding of the cosmology and how it literally was brought into a structure, a mathematical and architectural cosmic structure through the ancient text in the Vedas, in the Vedanga Jyotisha, with literally the nakshatras, the portions of the sky, how they evoked the energies of the deities and what the deities were, how they brought them into form into the time and space and place that we're living from the time and space and place that they live. You see, one of the things to understand is that the ancient Vedic astrology and timekeeping was actually designed to bring the universal divine deities out of their place and time and bring them into our place and time. And so what we use is a thing called the panchanga, which is not 
zodiacal based. It's not based on horoscopic astrology like you're used to talking about now. It's actually based on the phase angles between the sun, moon, and earth. It's based on what are called tithis and nakshatras and deities and directions and all of this ancient stuff. The first part of the A to Z course, I'm going to talk about those things for about the first, you know, for about the first hour. And then I move from that into talking about how those structures from the Vedas. Again, this isn't even later structures like yoga and Ayurveda and astrology, but I mean the pure Vedic principles, how those things then become the universal concepts that we use now in all of the sciences, like the gunas and elements, the, the four purushartas like dharma, artha, kama, moksha, things like karma, and then how those principles create the main Vedic sciences like yoga, Ayurveda, Jyotish, Vastu, Hastasamudrika, or palmistry. And then how the planets themselves, planets, signs, houses, nakshatras, then create a structure and an architecture based on that Vedic wisdom and those universal cosmological concepts. And so this, these ideas are so profound. This is really, I think, the most profound wisdom that the world really has ever seen. It couldn't be much more profound. And not just conceptually, not just belief, believing that that's what it is, and the inspiration that you get when you hear this, these things discussed, but the literal details of how it works. Because the miracle of the Vedic astrology is that it's not just explaining these things conceptually, but also literally, the details of how all of that happens. So it's not just a religion. It's not something that you have to believe in. It's something that you practice. It's something that works. And especially in these times we're living in now, where we are being confronted with the reality that we are not in control, that we live in a universe that has its own wisdom, and we are a participant in the play of life. And if we can understand the play of the cosmos, then we can understand the truth about why things are happening. And rather than spin out on weird ideas, we can be very grounded in the truth of why things are happening, when they're happening, etc. And where they're going next and all of that. So in the Vedic Astrology A to Z weekend course, I start with those larger principles. And again, even if that's the only thing you ever learn about astrology or about life, it's invaluable, frankly. Um, and when I said, what I just said is learn about astrology or life, I mean that intentionally because what I have definitely noticed is a person's approach to studying astrology, learning astrology, practicing astrology, is literally their approach to life. They see everything the way they see astrology. It's really a very open sort of architecture that people project onto. And when they don't learn it well, or they are still playing it, still uneducated about the nature of life, that was explained in all dharmic traditions, not just the Vedic people. But when, when we don't understand the true nature of why things are happening, again, we tend to grasp or reach for things that are like conspiracy theories or, or being triggered, or, or we're just not sure. So when we hear things like that, we're like, I don't know, maybe that's the truth. We don't have any ground beneath our feet. We're, we're not anchored to truth. The most beneficial part of studying these things or understanding astrology or learning about astrology is this unshakable faith in the wisdom of the cosmos and of the universe and that things are happening for a benevolent purpose. You might not always know what it is, but you know it's benevolent. 
And by the way, you can know what it is very easily by also studying the subtleties of Vedic astrology because after we learn the planet signs, houses, nakshatras, and all those structures that build the chart on a mechanical level, then we get into more subtleties like aspects, yogas, combustion, retrograde, other kinds of astronomical connections. Then we get into ways to evaluate all of that information with things like, you know, Shadbala and Avashtas and Vimshopaka and other kinds of tools and strategies to evaluate the interrelationships between all of the chart factors. Then we get into systems that interpret those interrelationships, things like the Parashari system or the Jaimini system or the Tajika system. And again, learning these things, you might say, well, I don't know what any of that is. And it's so confusing. Well, that's why I'm going to teach it. Because, for example, when you learn even things like the Tajika system, which Tajika was an approach to astrology that developed in the in the middle centuries, like from about, especially about the 8th century till about the 15th century. And it was literally a hybridizing of the astrologies of India and the West, mainly Persia. And you see this total cooperation, not just cooperation, but literally a hybrid um, practice between the methods and strategies of India with the methods and strategies that later became Western astrology. So again, I'm going to be teaching what those things are. For example, they were using a different zodiac by that time in Persia, but of course, because India never used the tropical zodiac, they always used the sidereal zodiac, they took methods that were directly related to a West, uh, not Western, but a, a tropical calculation and applied them in an Indian format with Indian yoga, with Indian aspects, an Indian zodiac and an Indian dasha cycle, but very Western, very Western methods. What have become Western methods? So again, when you learn these things, you don't just learn this confusing word or language or system. I'm going to explain what it is and show you how it works and give you the historical context, so you also understand literally the history of the astrologies, starting with the history of the astrology of India and the history of the spiritual practices in India all the way up through now, so you'll understand how these things work, why they work, and why it's not just a bunch of weird beliefs when you hear people like me say these things about, you know, the dharmic practices and the universe is the matrix and all this. I'm going to show you the quotes from the text, and again, you'll also understand why it's not just believing in those quotes, but seeing how those quotes from the text refer to sciences and practices that every scientific you know, culture, ancient culture, and modern culture uses today. So there's nothing, there's no substitute for the certainty. When you actually learn something correctly, you can have a bunch of ideas and beliefs about things, or then go, oh, I don't know, that's too complicated, that's too hard. Again, why are you here? Are you here to actually learn the nature of who you are and why you're here? Do you think these things are valuable to know? The, literally like the, the history of human consciousness unfolding. Because literally the, the, the study and the origin of the knowledge of India coming from the most abstract, um, you know, metaphysical origin to the literal application of assessing karmas down to the micro integer, that whole thread being able, you know, being able to learn that from the most subtle to the most literal is not something that is that you can replicate anywhere else. You can learn other spiritual pra you know, other spiritual systems, but something that literal, that specific, what else are you going to learn that's going to add so much wisdom to your life? Think about it. And I, I'm not saying necessarily to study with me um, this weekend or in the in the astrology A to Z weekend necessarily. I'm just saying this in a general sense. To put the, the study of astrology in a context. And again, of course, what I said at the beginning is you can learn astrology in many different ways. Many, every teacher teaches it differently because they teach it based on who they are and what their path is and what their life is about. I teach it 
This is me. This is my path. This is my life. This is my perspective. And I invite people to learn it that way. So this is why I'm so looking forward to teaching the A to Z weekend because I'm going to take you all the way from the very beginning down to the most granular and it's going to migrate into literally like the history of the Vedas, of yoga, of Ayurveda, of astrology itself, not just Indian astrology, but the history of how astrology developed from the Vedas to the Babylonians, to the Greeks, to the Persians and the Indians, and then how these methods came from here to there, how it's practiced this way. And this, learning this is like literally, this is like learning the history of spiritual science for, of, of uh, humanity. All right? So, I really invite you to look this over and see if this is something that you think is viable for you to learn. Because I will tell you, and just button this up now, having learned these things and practiced these things and studied these things and not to mention practice, practicing the meditations and, and all of those um, you know, sadhanas for so long is an enduring peace and calm that's in my mind, regardless of what happens in the world. It doesn't mean I don't get stressed out or worried or whatever, but I understand the reason that things happen. And you can understand it too. And not just intellectually, or again, have it be this flimsy belief. Okay, well, okay, Sam said this, all right, okay, thanks. Now I feel better because I heard his said this, and I, okay, now I believe that. But then, the next, but then the next person you might hear, the next thing that might fly into your head, can question, make you question the whole thing. Oh, but God, what if it's really this? What if it's really that? Oh my God, you know, and we're just, we don't really know or understand. We don't understand these things with depth. And so, again, you know, I, I'm offering this weekend course now because people are in their homes. Um, and, you know, usually I charge $150 or something for these weekend courses, but I've really knocked the price out of it because I want people to be able to get it, anybody who really wants it, so that it's not price prohibitive. Um, and I invite you to check it out, okay? Um, I'm going to be closing the registrations in a few days, probably the middle of next week, the middle of April, like April 10th or something, as you're seeing this now. But aside from that, um, I want you to really ponder what's, what's worth learning, what's worth focusing your time and attention on, and what's worth spending your money on. You know, again, this weekend course, it's not just a weekend. You have, you have the recordings for the rest of your life. So you can go back and watch the recordings 500 times if you want. And you'll get an extensive resource manual that, I, that I'm going to go over and teach from. So you're going to have all of those 32 different bulleted points laid out for you. Um, and you'll have that for the rest of your life and eight hours of explanation of me explaining all this to you. So um, I'm really looking forward to teaching it and I'd love to have you in the course. And again, um, I think it can really transform your mind and consciousness, even for my longtime students that, again, because I talk to a lot of my longtime students and they interact with me and then this one and that one and this thing and that thing. And they also, they, they lose the thread. So it's very easy to lose the thread back to the source. So I'm going to start all the way back at the source and explain like pretty much everything you need to know to understand what this is and how does it happen? How did it happen? How did it, how does it relate to other sciences, to other forms of astrology? And how does it work on a literal, functional, experiential way as well? And I'm sure it's going to really benefit you. So you take care and go ahead and register.